percent. Uh, uh, Fifty percent. It's a bit fierce, isn't it? It's not like you. I've seen you go white at five percent. <laughs> if you want to attract people in, you've got to be bold. Let's see. Well, how many items have we got marked? <laughs> how many? Huh. None, you clown. <laughs> you don't think I'm going to giving stuff away? Sir. Seriously, have you thought about a drawbridge? Really sweet, Granville. Well, uh, well, why don't you just take one milk bottle and I'll hold the flowers and then. You... I'll say something. Can't you speak? Normally I can. I mean, normally I can speak. What I mean is, if we were going out together on a date or something, I'd be able to speak. I'm almost certain I'll be able to speak. Nobody's ever given me flowers on the street before. You're a nice person, Granville. Oh, I wish you'd never said that. Why? Because that's what girls say when they turn round and go off with somebody nasty. <laughs> somebody big, handsome, and nasty. <coughs> Funny you should say that. I knew it. I knew it. Never mind. Keep the flowers anyway. What's my boyfriend going to say? Well, don't tell him. Who's going to tell him? I'm not going to tell him. He's the milk round supervisor. He'll see me wandering round with these. Oh, well, let's be honest about it. Tell him that Granville gave them to you. You know, Granville, who's not such a nice person, but maybe underneath is pretty nasty in an attractive sort of a way. <laughs> you know, keep the flowers. Tell him that's how Granville is. You know, flowers, champagne, bolts. <laughs> Stick to your bolts. Milk round supervisor. It's big, isn't it? Did Mrs. Gillespie be coming for her bread? Yes. Well, well what happened to the flowers? Her boyfriend gave them back to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so we're giving the flowers to the milkwoman's of her boyfriend now, are we? <laughs> Sometimes I really do think he's Hungarian. 
I thought I thought I thought I, I thought I knew that face. B -b Bessie Enderley. Hey, G Granville, you remember B Bessie Enderley? <laughs> no. <laughs> yes, you do. Look, that's her there. Very undistinguished little woman. Used to living at Gil Gordon Street with her second husband. Mm. What happened to her first? Oh, you he fell off a ladder. Oh, dear. Yeah, onto a Mrs. Berber Bradbury. <laughs> <laughs> he so enjoyed the experience, he made it a habit, you know. Yeah, as soon as his leg got better, they ran away together. <laughs> They're now living in, I believe, in... 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 Which I understand is, is very similar. I always admire people who have the courage to do that sort of thing. Oh, yes, it takes a lot of pluck to go on a live in Cesar and Cesar. <laughs> I don't mean that. I mean to throw caution to the wind for the person you love and run off together. Have you been uh, reading the uh, William Hickey column again? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, by the way, didn't you and I ought to have a little talky-walky about the milk woman's uh, boyfriend? No, we didn't. Yeah. I was merely speculating seriously about people like myself. You know, have this burning urge. B -b -b burning urge? You can't even get a fire going. Look at you. <laughs> All you got so far is a puff of smoke and sooty fingers. Well, everything's damp. It's your age. It'll pass. <laughs> I mean, the sticks are damp, the coal is damp. We'll get go and open up a packet of fire lighters. You won't let me use fire lighters, you say. They're too expensive. Well, they are. <laughs> they are in this a damn shop. I'm not paying these prices. Get round the co-op and buy some. Go on, I'm only joking. Go and open up a packet. <laughs> Not if they're going to count as my birthday present, are they? <laughs> you should see through all my little ploys, don't you? Right. Go on, then, agreed. Agreed. Well, what about her, then? Who? This woman you're reading about. Oh, Bebe, Be Bessie Enderley. Hi, uh, from uh, wherever it was, Gordon Street. Ah, oh, she's not in Gordon Street anymore. She's here in the paper. Mm. Get, getting married for the third time. Blimey, she doesn't hang about, does she? A minute ago, she was getting married for the second time. Mm. <laughs> anyway, what happened to her second husband? Never you my mind. Just make sure you put the money in the till for them for the firelighters. <laughs> <laughs> Silly beggar. <laughs> My God, there's nothing startles you more than a furtive grocer. <laughs> that was only a little startle. Wait till you see me big startle. <laughs> me, me, might, might I make a suggestion? No, you can't. I've heard your suggestions. It seems a pity you sitting there holding your chest and me standing here holding this car door. Couldn't we come to some different arrangement? Out of me way. I'm gagging for a cup of tea. Hey, listen, to strike a more depressing note, uh, how's your mother today? He's fine, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really glad about that. You'll never go to heaven, you. Me? What about her? She's been putting it off for years. <laughs> Don't be like that. Don't you ever feel any bitterness that she's a standing in your way? It's you that's standing in my way. <laughs> what are you doing in there? I'm sitting here while the seat's still warm. <laughs> It's about as close as I get to the privileges of an engaged person. <laughs> you know, being engaged to you is like having your own piano and not being allowed to uh, have a tinkle on it. I wouldn't mind, but you're always after the same three notes. <laughs> Listen, I appeal to you from the warm seat of this Morris Minor. I'll make it up to you someday. Couldn't we arrange a little bit on account? <laughs> If there's one thing you've taught me, it's never give credit. Uh. <laughs> oh! Oh, dear, dear. Still never mind. We, we shan't be using that end. <laughs> Take two of these. Two of them? <laughs> two of these in a cold bath at least once a day. Or whenever the itch gets unbearable. And whatever you do, 
Don't scratch it. <laughs> oh, all right. Come over later when I tuck my mother in. We'll have a bit of supper. <laughs> I tell you what, can't your mother eat the supper and I'll, I'll tuck you in? <laughs> oh, very well. <laughs> hey, what have you got that's got 50% off? That's the spirit, my love. You keep up that attitude of frank curiosity. We could be in for a memorable evening. <laughs> You. Oh, Zer Sutty, what have you been playing? <laughs> have you been out with Zer Sweep again? <laughs> Look at this estate. Have you ever got that fire going yet? Oh, yes, I think I've got it going now. Eh, uh, where you been? If you must know, I have been sitting in the warm seat of a, a, a Morris Minor. Whatever for? Oh, I, I have a great I have affection for the old Mor Morris Minor, you know. I love the way it curves around a bonnet and boot. Much as does a certain friend of mine who shall remain a nameless but state registered. <laughs> Delivery, Mr. Arkwright. Can you open warehouse door? <laughs> <laughs> Was it your impression that uh, a brummid just came round the door? Don't worry, I'll go later. No, no, I will go. I like to count everything those delivery men, men bring in. Why, you've got to trust somebody sometimes. Not when you're signing for it, you haven't. Look what happened to Neville Chamberlain. <laughs> Good morning, Mrs Featherstone. Is he in? No. Just us. You and me. A man and a woman. <laughs> Alone. Oh, my God, it's going to be one of them days, is it? No, he's just checking a delivery, Mrs Featherstone. Is there anything I can do for you? I prefer to be served by older persons. Why, I'm not contagious. Oh, it's nothing personal, Granville. In many ways, you're a willing lad. Oh, I am. I'm a willing lad. Simply oh. that a woman of my age, living alone... We're all alone, Mrs Featherstone, in the end. Sometimes at both ends. <laughs> you see how you are. You're, you're weird. Weird? You talk weird. You're not like older people. Oh, I know. Nobody talks to me. I'm invisible. I'm the errand boy from outer space. <laughs> it's not possible for a woman of my age to have a good gossip with a person of your age. I'm sorry, Granville, but there's no satisfaction in it for the seasoned gossiper. You've got to play in your own league. I mean, you wouldn't ask Kevin Keegan in for a game of blow football, would you? <laughs> What's it really like to be a woman? <laughs> you see what I mean? You're weird. I'll just take two small loaves, please, Granville. <laughs> Don't know why you think I'm weird. Why <laughs> they make you sweat them deliveries? Why didn't you let the driver bring it in? I did. It's not the lifting, it's about the prices. <laughs> it's all these hair overheads, you see. Now, don't tell me you're going to be depressed all day because you've had a big bill to pay. I uh, possibly am. It's a free country. An Englishman has every right to be depressed if he, if he wants to be. I know, but you get all your money back, don't you, when you've resold the stuff? Yeah, but when's that going to be? What's my, my, my money going to be worth by the time I get that back? It's all the moment middlemen, you see. Oh, no. What? The fire's gone out again. What we should really be selling is the stuff we make ourselves. I've just washed my hands and now my fire's gone out again. <laughs> treacle toffee. <laughs> <laughs> we mama might have a go at that treacle toffee. Arkwright's famous here to treacle toffee. 
That sounds all right, does that? That sounds as if it's been going a long time. <laughs> More you can say for this damn fire. <laughs> I can see a lorry on the motorway with that written on it, you know. Ah, oh, Christ, for him, a famous, famous, at her. It hit it, 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 You'll never get all that on the side of a lorry. <laughs> Just uh, don't waste your breath on a witticism, so save it for blowing, would you? Anyway, this is no demand for the treacle toffee nowadays. Not since a uh, yoghurt came in. <laughs> Very sticky and all, isn't it, to a treacle toffee? Nurse Gladys and I might become even more attached than ever. <laughs> hey, I might have to marry her. <laughs> no, no. She'd think of some t terrible medical way of her wriggling loose. Oh, do not make your eyes water. Yeah, that, that's the, that's the method. <laughs> oh. You see, what we should be supplying, really, is something that is in constant demand. <clears throat> no, it's no good. I'll have to use another fire lighter. Fire, 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 fire,
You'll never look back, Cyril. Matter of fact, you won't be able to for the first time. Because <laughs> it gives you a terrible stiff neck if you're not careful. That is 85p and a bare pound for the mirror. <laughs> the mirror? Well, you want to keep a check on the flex in the eyes, won't you? Best to do it privately. If the wife catches you looking in the house mirrors, she will eventually think that you've got another woman. <laughs> Mind you, with any luck by that time, you should have. <laughs> She'll put two and two together and make well, one, one. Well, one hell of a row. <laughs> That's true. That's true. <sighs> Thank you, sir, says Cyril. Oh. <laughs> how, how are you doing, Granville? That's too strong. <laughs> no, I know it's too strong. <laughs> you want to cut your mixture down? I don't know whether this is going to work, you know. What, our Christ and little flamers? <laughs> of course they are going to work. They've let you cap, haven't they? Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> You dip your uh, rag in your mixture, you see, and then you uh, uh, put the sticks all round it, like that, you see. Then you've got your firewood on the outside and you've got this little bit of a flammable core on the inside, haven't you? <laughs> you dropped it. Well, I know I'd have dropped it. I'm just uh, demonstrating it to you. Pick it up. Ooh, right, sir. Hey, hang about a minute. This bit of rag looks familiar. Of course it is. I've just, uh, I've just dropped it on the floor. <laughs> well, it's not... It's me shirt! <laughs> it's me shirt! Me best disco shirt! Oh, that old yes, a spotted thing? Yes, that old spotted... What do you mean, old spotted thing? Oh, look at it now! Well, oh, it's never looked better in my opinion. <laughs> You've never liked it, have you? Of course I've liked it. It's just that every time I used to read the washing instructions on the, on the back of it, I was reminded very keenly of your poor dear dear mother. What instructions? No ring. She never had one either. <laughs> oh, that's me best disco shirt. You've never been to a disco. I know, but this is the shirt I would have worn if I had. <laughs> Look, any old shirt will do in a not to go in. But I wanted to not go in this one. <laughs> well, you'll just have to stay at home in something completely different, won't you? <laughs> never suited you, that shirt. Get away. That shirt had real flair. Well, it's ideal for fire lighters, then, isn't it? <laughs> Granville, let us, let us just be honest with one another. No, oh, I hate it when you start to say, Granville, let's be honest with one another. Well, why? Because I know it's going to cost me money, that's why. <laughs> Granville, get Granville. I'm not too keen on Granville, Granville, either. <laughs> look, that shirt made you look that too Hungarian. Well, so what? You, you keep on telling me that I'm supposed to be half Hungarian. Yeah, but it's the, it's the bottom half of you that's Hungarian, isn't it? That's where the, that's where the gypsy in you lies, doesn't it? I mean, you can't put your shirt on the bottom half, can you, eh? So think of the neck hole. <laughs> no, you are a British from the waist up. It's only from the waist down that you are so slightly Budapest. Well, there's some sort of a pest, any role. <laughs> Listen, consign your shirt to the flames here, Grand Villains, and stick to your fire lighters. There might be something very big for you in it. Mm. Like a bonus? <laughs> <laughs> You'd uh, drive a hard bargain, you. <laughs> Look at the tutor I've had. Tell you what I'll do. Every one of your fire lighters that we use on our fire, I will let you have. At their cost. <laughs> there we are, Mrs. Parslow. Will there be anything at all for Mr. Parslow? I don't see why there should be. He never buys anything for me. Oh, well, I thought you might surprise him with a bit of something tasty. I would, if I knew where she lived. <laughs> How's that uh, eldest boy of yours, then? Get in daft. Oh, dear. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mrs. Parslow. I call again. Uh, suppose I shall have to. Afternoon, Mrs. Parslow. Glad you think so. <laughs> <laughs> that woman. Yes, had a hard life. 
built for it, wasn't she? Specially designed for it. Imagine how she'd cope with being happy. <laughs> Very below average in being happy, my love. Who was that? Don't worry, don't worry. It's a man whose dog often takes him for a walk. About <laughs> What size dog is it? I don't know, he never got that far in. <laughs> what does he do if he wants to buy something? You'll see, he'll be, he'll be back in a minute. <laughs> there he comes. Go on a minute now, stay! Stay! Ooh, could I hit him? <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, watch this next bit, it's good. This. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, at least we've got his money. What does he want? A smaller flaming dog, if you ask me. What does he want to buy? All that will become clear in the fair fullness of time, my love. Come on, come on, come on, now, stay, stay, sit, sit. Ooh. Could I have a bag of the condition powder, sir? <laughs> With that till. I know I'll have to. <laughs> One of these days I should be coming in here and finding you harmless. <laughs> which would do us all a favour. <laughs> it is on the list of little adjustments I have to make, my love. It is a second in order of priority. What's first? <laughs> Serves me right for asking. Uh, I know. Now watch, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. You're, you're welcome. <laughs> Cheerio! <laughs> Cheerio! <laughs> He's right at the top of the street now. <laughs> right, if he's in that good a condition, it must be him who's taking the powder. <laughs> Now. Yeah, I know what you all want, my love. The point is, uh, will you let me give it you? <laughs> or, or, or rather, uh, sell it you. Let's get our priorities right. Listen, you are a medical person. How would you like to bear, bear prod me gently to see where it hurts? I wouldn't. Go. What was that? I think our uh, granville's just gone off. <laughs> <laughs> making his mixture too strong. That's what he's been doing. What's he had you messing with in there? Yes, nicely, thank you. <laughs> well, I'm telling you, he's too strong. Mm -hmm. And will you put, put your cap out when you're talking to people? <laughs> I wonder where our Granville gets to at night. As soon as it got near closing time, he was off like a rocket. That's three times today he's gone off like a rocket. <laughs> you feel such a fool in the shop. Bang! Whoops, excuse me, I'll just go and put our Granville out. <laughs> There's not a lot of confidence as yet in our Christ, little flamers. Oh, pure prejudice. I've just lit me pile of fire with one. It'll be all nice and snug in case I can lure Nurse Gladys back later for a milk stout. <laughs> oh, dear. Bang goes another evening of fun. 